In the last video, we were just looking at um, this notion of an indefinite integral, which is something where we have an integral symbol here without bounds. And so if we were, for example, trying to find the integral of x squared, what we would do, we would first find the antiderivative. Remember, that's a function whose derivative is this. So see, if you take the derivative of x cubed over 3, the derivative of this is x squared. And then from that, you just add a c to it. Now, what I'd like to do then is show you a few tricks. So actually, let's just go back to this original one here. Take a look. So we're trying to work with x squared, and we ended up with x cubed over 3. And it turns out all things of this nature, so things with a polynomial you know, to an exponent here, so something like x to the 2, or it could be x to the 5, there's the same trick works out, it turns out. So that's why the first of these tricks here, so I'm going to show you this, so tricks. These are sort of shortcuts here. These are things that are probably worth learning. Sometimes you actually are given these on a test, sometimes you have to memorize them. But basically, if you have f of x, and this is the integral of f of x dx. In other words, this is the antiderivative of some function. So if you start off with something and you want its antiderivative, here's what you do. So if you have something that goes x to the power of n, let's say, you want to find the integral of anything to any power, well, it goes like this. Look over here. What we did is we took, well, the integral of x squared was x cubed over 3. If you notice what you have to do then, is you have to raise this to one power more than it was. So where it was a 2, now it becomes a 3. And then you have to divide by that same number. Now, if you remember about derivatives, every time you do a derivative, you go down by a power. Remember, if you're taking a derivative of something, you would, you know, let's say I wanted the derivative of this, I would take a 3 and bring it down in front and make it x to the power of 2. So what's neat is derivatives make you go less in powers, at least if it's something that's like this, and integrals make you go greater in powers. So that's the key, key here. So if it's x to the n, then it becomes x to the n plus 1, all that divided by n plus 1. In other words, if it was x to the 2, it becomes x to the 3 over 3. If it's x to the 5, it becomes x to the 6 over 6, and so on. This could even be a fraction. But you can't forget the plus c. That's the key thing here with indefinite integrals, that you always have to add a c, because we don't know the bounds here. Well, it turns out there's some other tricks. Um, just like e to the x, the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. That's really nice. That's because this, if you take the derivative of this, you get this. Now remember, that's what an integral is. It's an antiderivative. So you see how if we take a function, we go to the right, so to speak, and do the integral. Well, if I take the derivative of this thing, I should get this. Just like the derivative of e to the x should be e to the x. Don't forget, you just always have to add the c. Well, it turns out if we have 1 over x, that turns out the natural log of x will... If you take the derivative of natural log of x, it gives you 1 over x, so that'll work. And we could, of course, say plus c. Keeping in mind, though, that your x has to be positive. Your x must be positive. If not, the natural log doesn't make any sense. Um, we can do a few other ones. What if we have sine of x? Well, here it helps to remember what your derivatives were. So we're going to do sine and we're going to do cosine of x. I don't know if you remember the derivative, but the derivative of sine was cos, and the derivative of cos was negative sine. So that means, uh, so the integral of cos is sine then. That's because derivative of sine is cos. Now this one right here, der derivative of cos was negative sine. So if I start with a positive sign here, that means it has to be negative cos. So that means cosine of x. And again, these are maybe ones just to know. These are really nice to have an idea what's going on. Um, by the way, n here, n cannot be negative 1. Maybe that's nice to know here. Because if I made n equal to negative 1, uh, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and you can't divide by 0. Well, you can. It just gives you problems. So the key thing here, I think the sort of key message to learn here is that if you're taking an indefinite integral, in other words, you have no bounds. So if you're not given any boundaries here, then add C. That's something really important to remember. So for all of these, you need to add a plus C term. Remember, because if I took the derivative of this thing right here, this would go poof, it would disappear. And again, remember, the idea is you to do an integral, you take the antiderivative which means you find a function whose derivative is what you're looking at.
That's why we call it antiderivative. It's the opposite of doing a derivative. So that is how we work with antiderivatives. And that's also how we can work with indefinite integrals. So those are integrals without bounds. In the next videos, I'm going to be showing you things about, uh, well, a few more tricks actually with indefinite integrals. So we'll, we'll see some more tricks and some more details.